Thank you. 
Okay, really quick. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Okay, so we're going to, if you're interested in talking or asking any questions, we, we will come to you. You have a question? You, if you have a question, I'll come over and, and we'll just raise your hand. He'll say, hey, anybody have any questions? And we're like, yes, and we'll come over and then you can ask a few questions. Um, easy. And then um, no flash photography, please but um, you can take without flash. Um, you know where the restrooms are. I don't know where my applause sign is. Yikes. Do I have an applause sign? Got it. Got it. <laughs> We're gonna momentarily, momentarily. <laughs> oh yeah, see my high tech applause sign? Super high tech, don't forget if you see this flash, super, you see the lights. <laughs> Yeah, so when you see it waving, we're gonna practice, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael W. Perry. <laughs> okay, don't be shy, just yell, it's okay. You guys wanna warm up, it's radio, we want people to be heard, but just so you know, it, we are um, streaming live. So um, if you're here with somebody you shouldn't be here with, <laughs> you're in so much trouble. <laughs> Called in sick today, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, you called in sick. Yeah, great. You're going to be right there in the front. They'll be like, hey, I saw you at Justin. You was walking. Okay. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> she went to concert last night. She said she's tired now. Yeah. Oh. She was partying with Bruno. <laughs> she was up till late. What time did the concert end? 11, right? Because when I drove by at 9 o'clock, he just got on stage. I drove by, you notice, because I wasn't there. <laughs> Whatever wasn't there. <laughs> okay, we're going to practice again. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Michael W. Perry. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it really is Michael W. Perry. <laughs> you didn't hear that weak one just coming in earlier, right? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Hi, guys. 
Well, you guys all shy. Don't be, don't Love be nervous. that spontaneous <laughs> applause. Thank you. That was so warm. Um, okay, she explained everything? Sort of. Yeah, okay, kind of. If they're busted with people. And, and there he is. Uh, uh, anybody here with somebody you're not supposed to be with? I, I said that already. Okay. They already right. Just checking because we're not insured. Okay, you can't sue us. Um, say hi. Uh, Jimmy, are you there? Say hi. Yes. There he is. That's Jimmy. Say hi, Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Where's your rooster? Yeah, him. It just didn't take us out of the air. Right here, unplug something. <laughs> you just kicked. You unplugged something. Sorry, that was that's, that's Justin <laughs> unplugged. <laughs> that was his other album, Justin Unplugged. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, normally, oh, I'll explain all that in a minute. There, Hold on a second. I got to read something here. There, there will be a few questions. Huh? There will be a few questions. This is Shane and Mike. Hey, Shane. Again, Miley. How are you doing? Thanks for coming. Is that Miley? Yes. So hey, we'll how be are right you? Here. Right here. And Hawaii flags are flying at half staff at the state capitol. We'll probably just get, uh, let's get going with a, uh, just a song after uh, the introduction of you. And uh, then we'll probably do like two songs and then uh, talk about Shane and then finish up. And it's Justin. And Jimmy, you're gonna need <coughs> Jimmy, you need two lives, right? Hey. Hey. Justin Young, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. fellow Mustang, Kamahayo grad, Bears fan too, love that, we'll be hearing from him <laughs> in just a little bit. Got to tell you about the weather though, because that's what we're all concerned about. And what was the, interesting is you're, you're I'm going to ask you a question about uh, Kamahayo, uh, who was the guy with the media lab? Uh, Connolly? Yes. Uh, was it Connolly? John? John. John. Connolly, I think, right? Clearly I was never in the media lab. Oh, you never remember. did? Okay, that didn't, uh, that wasn't it. That's not what got you started on. No, I was doing music back then. Oh, yeah. okay. Some of that hot and muggy that we've been having so much of lately. That's it for right now, kids. Nothing but the best, folks. We're heading to the music hall next. Hey, I'm Stephanie Long. After a long day, you don't have to stay up for the news. So I got the two lives. We can throw it to you after these commercials. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have to break for some commercials every now and then. The inside baseball stuff here. We'll break for commercials, come back a couple of times, and uh, ask for your spontaneous applause every single time with the sign that you've already seen. A local downloaded the Helly app from helly.com and is exhibiting... Hey, jingling back to you in 10. Hey. Food and giveaways. Genius. Indulge with a little aloha this holiday season with Hawaiian Host. And here we are. Get ready. Welcome to the iHeartRadio Music Hall, where a bunch of people have spontaneously applauded for absolutely no reason, and uh, they're here. Uh, you guys, how many people have been to the Music Hall before? Oh, really? Just a, just a couple. All right. We well, it's good, uh, good to have all you uh, virgins here. It's wonderful. And we have uh, usually Karen. Karen Cavey Hawaii is sitting right here, except today she has a, uh, she has a concert with the Royal Hawaiian Band. Yes. Which is, which is, I'm sorry to say, more important than this. 
<laughs> because the Royal Hawaiian Band is uh, is Performing. is something, and she's done that for years. So she's uh, she's off somewhere doing a uh, doing a concert. We have a great show today. This is going to be one of the most unusual shows we've ever had. You'll see why in a little while. First of all, we have to introduce an old friend, a Kalaheo Mustang, a Bears fan, as Jimmy is often Bears. says. Yes. <laughs> Poor Bears fans. Poor Bears. Yeah. Oh, the Bears. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, we are here at the iHeartRadio Music Hall to honor him and all the good things that he's been doing. Please welcome Callahale boy, local dude made good, Justin Kavika Young. All right, on. Good morning. Hey. How are you doing? Haven't seen you in a long time. I know. It's great to be back. Great to see you. And the reason you're here, of course, is that everything in Southern California is on fire, so oh you decided to come here. Yes, we've been evacuated. And I, so I can't tell you how many people I, I know who were. Uh, that That's a good thing. You and Colby Calais have been uh, performing all over the place forever. Yes, and we still are. We are in Nashville. We just started a band together as well called Gone oh. West, so yeah. Been, been playing music since uh, since I last saw you, and now I'm going to play some more. <laughs> Would you like him to do that right now? Yes! Justin Young. I can hear her heartbeat from a thousand miles. Hear the heavens open every time she smiles When I come to her That's where I belong Running to her like a river strong She gave me love, 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 love Crazy love She gave me love, 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 love Crazy love Got a fine sense of humor when I'm feeling low down. When I come on to her, when the sun goes down, she takes my troubles away and takes my grief, takes away my heartache in a night like a thief. Yeah. She gives me love, love, and love, and love, crazy love. Yes, I need, yes, I need her in the daytime. Oh, I need, yes, I need her in the night. I want to throw my arms all around her. To kiss and hug and hold you so tight. Justin Kavika Young. Uh, I'm guessing these guys who are helping you here, you just didn't find them under a street lamp on Kalakaua. 
Uh, well, that like, would have been so much easier. <laughs> no, I've actually had to be friends with these guys for many years. This is Ethan Capone on keys. Hi, Ethan. This is Sean Pimentel, my brother from another, on bass, vocals, and kick pedals, playing all kinds of things. With never never heard of, of them. Limbs. Never heard of these guys. Uh, great musicians, both of them. Uh, would you guys like to hear another song from Justin? Uh, well, then, first of all, you have to endure the commercials as we come right back from the iHeartRadio Music Hall. Why you gotta bring up all this stuff? <laughs> Justin, we're gonna do the uh, the hip thing. Um, when, when's the premiere, by the way? Sunday. Sunday. Okay. And is there anything else you're doing? Are you are you doing any performances here? I'm just here for the film festival and playing whenever you guys say to play. So. That is <laughs> that is so selfish of you not playing more <laughs> while you're here. Uh, okay, we'll figure that out. Really? I love okay. this neighborhood. American Savings Bank offers jumbo home loans with loan amounts up to $2 million or more. Visit a branch or go to ASBHawaii.com. Equal housing lender and FDIC. Are you ready to discover a world of beautiful possibilities? The brand new Ulta Beauty is now open with the very best in makeup, fragrance, skincare, and hair care. Hurry in to shop more than 20,000 products from over 500 brands, including Tarte, Morphe, Redken, Living Proof, and more. Explore beauty services at our salon, brow bar, and skin bar. All with Ulta Beauty experts to help you feel your best. Ulta Beauty. That might have been... Oh. Tower brand has fresh frozen pork. Yeah, that's not too long at all. This is now the Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union presents Justin Young in the iHeart Radio Music Hall Show. Is Paulette here? Paulette? We didn't invite the client? Their sponsor? Oh, she was invited. Okay. After all this weather, All right, here we go. KSSK Radio. Welcome to the Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union iHeart Radio Music Hall. It's the longest name for the smallest room in Hawaii, but this is a very intimate concert with Justin Kavika Young himself, Kalaheo Mustang from Humble Roots on the Windward Side. He goes on, on tour all over the country meets Colby Calais, does collaborations with some of the best musicians ever, right? I think so. Where do you, <laughs> where do you live now? I live in Nashville currently. I've been there for a couple years. Um, Colby and I moved out there to experience the uh, music city. Okay. And I've uh, been writing and uh, recording with two of our friends, Jason and Nellie Reeves. They're also a married couple, and so we're doing a brand, band project together. Wait, wait, wait. A what couple? They're a married couple. Like you? Oh, we're, well, we're not married yet. We're engaged. Okay. Permanently well, even engaged. that's news, isn't it? <laughs> not to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's like, 
We're not you, married yet. But, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Colby Calais, right there. <laughs> Girl who was for all time famous for saying, will you count me in? That's right. right. <laughs> That was a legitimate uh, impromptu moment. She actually needed to. She told us that. Yeah. You told us that the last time you were here. Yeah. Uh, we have questions for you because people are uh, nearly. Hi. What's your name? Where are you from? Caitlin from Eva Beach. Um, I used to watch you back in two th early 2000s on Overdrive Live. Oh, gosh. But where, yeah. <laughs> where did you first start music? Like, what inspired you to start music? I mean, I always loved music growing up. I think it was really like. Uh, Boys to Men was actually the group that made me want to become a musician, and uh, you know I bought a purple suit as a sweaty, <laughs> sweaty kid in Hawaii, and we sang in the bathrooms and acapella stuff, and then and then I sort of like gravitated back to the Hawaiian roots and and was sort of bringing my ukulele to school every day and, and doing that stuff. So that's probably how it started, and I don't even think I was very good. I just loved it so much. I would I had a little like karaoke machine, like a cassette machine, and I put it in my closet. So the neighbors wouldn't hear me sing, because I was too 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 shame, um, <laughs> and I probably should have been, because I think I sounded terrible. But I just loved it so much, I kept doing it. Yeah. And here you are. Here I am. Yes. And so this was one of the first shows, the uh, the morning show with yeah. you guys. Yeah. I remember, you know, I couldn't sleep all night because I was so nervous, and I think I was a senior in high school. And that's and you guys were <laughs> so nice and generous. That's right. Time. You were. Yeah, you were still in high school at the yeah. time. Yeah. And we're at the Sheraton Waikiki, and he mm -hmm. came, comes over and. It's pretty amazing, and the rest is history. Um, what, would you guys like a song now? Yes! Justin Young. All right. On my own, on the way, a moment ends, and one begins. Set some freedom over the sea But to watch my home further from me Sometimes I reach to meet the clouds But I always keep one foot on the ground I go here, sometimes lonely. My eyes are open, so much to see. Sometimes they long for familiarity. And away on distant lands, always keep one foot on sand.
Justin Young. So now, now based, I mean, from uh, the Windward side and Hawaii music all the way now out in Nashville. How do they, and we know you're in Nashville because Sweetie saw you there. I actually, yeah. the last time we saw each other, <laughs> I was at a Tennessee Titans game at the airport. Right. And there he was cruising well, in the Nashville airport. Walking through BNA, yeah, yeah. The Nashville airport. And I'm like, <laughs> Justin! <laughs> <laughs> We ha yeah, it's weird seeing people like out of context. What are you doing here, yes. five thousand miles away? He's like, oh yeah, I'm in Nashville. I was playing at the Grand Ole Opry so or whatever. Living there now. How do people? <laughs> how do people in the country music scene like Hawaiian music? Do they? Do they relate? Uh, actually, I mean, I, I play that song "One Foot on Sand" all over the the place in this. You know, when I'm on tour, and it might be the only song that has any Hawaiian influence in it, like directly. And that's often the song that they pick out of the set that they enjoy. So really? I think, and I think. I didn't grow up listening to country music at all, but um, I do see a lot of similarities. I mean, just in the lap steel, in the storytelling aspect of it, um, and how organic it is. So I think there are a lot of similarities between Hawaiian. Storytelling is a big deal for mm -hmm. Justin. You can see all his his songs are like that, right? So are you doing country now? Ish. That's the question. Ish. <laughs> yeah. Grand our, band, our band is in the country genre. It's it's not super country, but yeah. It, Grand Ole cool. Opry. Yes. There's a lot of crossover in country Absolutely. right now. Absolutely, yeah. But you can tell storytelling is so big to him. And so he said, wait, I'm, I do this with music. Maybe I could do it in another medium, like film, movies, cinema. You're about to find out about that career, which is off to a really good start after this. KSSK Radio Live with Justin Young in the iHeartRadio <laughs> Music Hall, sponsored by Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. Uh, can we do it in the middle? Oh, yeah, wherever you want to do it. Yeah, just give me a cue and then back into spots. Food family, friends, cue. Do it right after you hear the finance factor spot. Got it. How do you sp how do you pronounce La is it Lacroix or Lacroix? <laughs> Water? It's Lacroix. You have to say it with the crazy accent. <laughs> Hey, November means 30 days of thanks at Foodland, right? And they say mahalo to you for 70 great years of shopping at Foodland with a brand new deal every single day, something fresh during the month of November today. For example, pizza. The deal delivers pizza, DiGiorno pizza. Get a frozen 12-inch DiGiorno for $4.88. Is that a misprint? No, that's right. With your Maikai card, of course, only at Foodland. Perfect excuse for a night in. And what goes with uh, pizza? Well, they say sparkling water. 
I had a couple of other suggestions, which they also had of Foodland, but sparkling water just happens to be free this weekend at Foodland. Pick up an eight-pack of LaCroix or a 12-pack of Waterloo sparkling, sparkling water free when you redeem one My Reward certificate. All right, Foodland. Pizza and water? <laughs> That's, there's something just wrong about that, but... Whatever you want, what adult beverage you want to put with your DiGiorno, they have it at Foodland. But the water is free. That's pretty good. Have a Maikai weekend from Foodland Food, family, and friends. We'll start with uh, you, and uh, you had a friend named Miley. We'll talk to Miley. And then uh, one day, and then uh, you, uh, I think you should bring up one day Miley mentioned something to me. <laughs> Shane, you want to stay? You want to stay right there? Is that a good place for you? You're welcome to come up here, except I'll make you do commercials. That's Coming back in 10. Now, uh, Justin's used to that high-pitched female screaming because they've, they've done that for his entire career. Running away. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talked about that. But Justin! He's a uh, documentary filmmaker now. Storytelling. So you got into storytelling. You liked film. You took some courses. Yeah, I've always loved documentaries and nonfiction in general. Um, and I thought, you know, if I'm not going to do music exclusively, what else would I like to do? And I thought, you know, maybe I'll try my hand at documentary filmmaking. So I went to a, a summer course at the New York Film Academy. Yeah. Um, enjoyed it. Seemed to have a knack for it. Um, and the summer uh, after that, I took that course. I came back home and was playing some shows. And I met, uh, through mutual friends, um, this young lady that's here, Miley. And she was telling me about... Miley's from... She's Well, she's actually from L.A., but now lives on the North Shore of Oahu. Okay. Yeah. She was telling me about her, um, her older brother, whom helped raise her and sort of was her protector from an abusive um, father in her life uh -huh. and uh, how wonderful, you know, all these wonderful attributes that he taught, he taught her and that he was her hero. Her, her brother. Life. Okay. And uh, sort of at the end of this, you know, wonderful uh, exposition about her brother, she told me, you know, the guy um, that attacks, attacked Nancy Kerrigan, that's, that's my brother, Shane. And I was just floored because I, I thought I, you know, I'd known a lot about the attack. It's something that, when it happened, it was huge, and I watched the 30 for 30, and uh, I had no idea that you know the attacker had any connection to Hawaii, and to know that this person that was her hero, um, you know, the world only knew for the most part as as a hitman, mm -hmm. and I thought that would be a really interesting story, and of, of course I thought it was a long shot, but as we like were saying goodbye, I was like, hey, just in case you guys ever want to tell your story, I would, I'd love to make it into a documentary, um, and uh, about a year later, she was like, hey, my brother's ready to tell his story, and we want you to do it. That. That is so wild, because 24 years ago was Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan, the whack heard around the world, mm -hmm. right? And has anybody seen the movie I, Tanya? What? Nobody? Me. <laughs> Not even Shane? A few Good grief. Yeah. Shane's yeah. Side. <laughs> Shane. <laughs> Were you portrayed? Like, kind, I'm kidding. Just kind of, <laughs> we'll find out, ladies and gentlemen, here he is. The hitman himself, the very first one we ever had in this uh, on this program, <laughs> Shane Stant. Welcome to the room. How are you? Good, great. Thank you. It's good to be here. Um, you swung the baton. You got you got hired by these uh, weirdos that that uh, Tanya was hanging around, right? Yeah, I uh, I did get hired by them, and I guess I could bunch in to be one of those weirdos as well. So. <laughs> How about what you paid? Uh, I think it was 6800 and it was supposed to be some other work. It was, it was, uh, it wasn't a lot, I'll tell you that. Did so. you have to sneak, was it hard to do? Did you sneak in? I, um, I don't know anything about that. It was sort of one of those things where 
you 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 kind of have to fit in, which means that for the most part, your mentality has to be not blank, but it has to you feel comfortable where you're at. So it's kind of a mind game as far as uh, being in a place you're not supposed to be, but being able to like fit in and well. So uh, I think m most things are more of a mental thing than like a physical. And uh, so you were able to fit in. You you mm -hmm. you you were okay with that in your mind at the at the time. It was okay at the time. Yes. Then afterwards, I think is anything you do something, and then it starts to kind of fester in your mind and your heart, and you start to look at things a little bit different. And of course, the guys that hired you were the, pretty much the gang that couldn't shoot straight, and uh, that thing fell apart really quick. You ended up doing time. Yeah, as you know, and uh, honestly, I should have. You know, so. Um, I kind of took that on and did my time, and then uh, I pretty much stayed out of the, I just disappeared for about 20 years. No wow. social media, no cell phone. Really? They didn't know nothing, yeah. Where'd you live? I lived in Southern California, then I also lived in Idaho, uh, Montana, Oregon. I moved around a lot. When the movie I, Tanya came out and brought this all, all up again, did you go see it? Uh, yeah, actually, my girlfriend and I went to see it, and it was cool because nobody knew, so it was kind of fun. <laughs> We're just in the back watching it, you know, like, oh, that idiot's me. <laughs> so it looked that good. <laughs> and uh, without giving any spoilers away, because we want you to see the finished product, Justin made a movie out of this and about what happened after jail, because you went in for how long? Uh, 18 months. Wow. And, uh, yeah, actually, I had been... It w I was very hard to get a hold of because I didn't have like a listed number or anything. Um, but 30 for 30 for ESPN got a hold of me probably about a year before that. And the director was a really sweet lady, but I just was not really interested in that. And then um, when my sister had told me about Justin, it really intrigued me that it was a Hawaiian project. Uh, most people didn't know that I was Hawaiian. And so that was really something that led me towards that. And then also, I had a lot of mistrust because the interviews that I had done previously would just get twisted and, and turned and, and you're basically completely out of control yeah. of what it was. So uh, then I was able to, to talk to Justin and I could tell he was just a guy that had like a really good heart and was a genuine person. So that's pretty much was my decision so what changed your life? How, how did you change? You, were, you had a dark past. How did that change? Well, I think one of the best things that happened you know, to me was being in prison. And um, you just are sitting there by yourself. And so you either decide, like, this is going to decide what kind of person I'm going to be, or uh, I want to decide what kind of person that I'm going to be. So taking that time and being able to reflect and look at my life and and kind of realizing that you decide who you want to be as a person, even though the circumstances in your life definitely course us, you know, especially at a young age, but you ultimately decide what kind of person you want to be. And the rest is in the movie. Would you guys now like to see this movie? Yes. Would that be interesting? And by the way, see I, Tanya, too. R rent that. It's, it's actually a good movie. I After don't know. After you watch ours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's interesting you get a one perspective and then this one gives you you talk to michelle kwan who was actually on the ice with nancy yeah so michelle is actually a friend of ours and it i mean it wasn't on purpose but we happened to happen to be doing a movie about you know a moment in history where she was literally behind nancy kerrigan when that happened and went to the uh, uh or didn't go to the olympics because they let nancy kerrigan go i mean she was directly affected by it yeah um, so she did give us an exclusive interview for the film. And I think what's interesting which, about you were talking about with Shane is that uh, we, we go through his childhood, too, and his childhood in a lot of ways set him up to be the kind of person who, who could do the hit in the way that he was pattern-seeking in his mind. He knew how to fit in. He would sneak on the planes when he was a kid to, a, you know, to fly to see his mom, and those are the kind of s skills that he used to, to do the hit. And then it, you know, we go through that into, into the way that it changed him and the way that he became someone who could have a positive influence on someone else's life. And I think watching I, Tonya, um, 
you see what how one dimensional they you know they showed him in the film and totally. it's nothing like him. Well, it, everybody's one dimensional in the movies. Yes. You got an so hour we, and a half. we tried to add more dimension to the story and bring a little bit of heart and humanity back into it because I think the relationship is something that's a really beautiful thing and it's it was partially because he did have that incident that changed his course and made him into a better person. Shane, have you ever communicated with Nancy Kerrigan? No, I'd wanted to, but it's illegal for me to, because if you have a victim, you can't contact them. Oh. And I think past a certain point, too, um, you just don't want to press into someone's life. And I know that for her life, there was so much media, constantly so much pressure yeah. that it would just be an added negative. Yeah. I want to see this movie really, really bad. When is it appearing? You, you got accepted. As a matter of fact, it's one of the highlights of the Hawaii International Film Festival. When? It'll be screening Sunday at 3.30 um, at Dole, and again, uh, Wednesday at 3.30 as well at Dole. And you can uh, buy tickets at hif.org. 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 Is this the first of many for you? I don't know many. It was the hardest thing I think I've ever done professionally. Um, I, I directed and edited it, and I thought for many months that I would never finish editing, and I would be probably just working on it for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm excited to, to do some more projects. I, I can't imagine starting one right away, though. So Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I'll tell you what. We'll let you start a song in just a little while. That is a fascinating story. you got to see it. It's called what? My Hero's Shadow. My Hero's Shadow. 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 And uh, Sunday premiere at HIF, and then I'm sure it'll be on DVD and streaming and all that af after that, right? I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> because you're going to make sure it does that. Uh, you folks, HIF.org, find out, uh, and then get your tickets and enjoy an unusual movie by a local boy. What a story, huh? This is KSSK Radio. Back to the music right after these important messages. <laughs> Uh, Miley first. I had to. I had to get. You know, because my broken ankle, I needed bling. Any more questions? 
Sweetie, got one more? Anybody have questions now? No. They're like, no. This is a very shy crowd. Except for. <laughs> Back in the uh, music hall, thank you very much to, to the folks over at um, Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union. They used to call it Hawaiian Tell Federal Credit Union. Paulette uh, has nothing to do with Hawaiian Tell necessarily, so they changed the name. Hawaiian Financial Federal Credit Union, one of the sponsors of this. I got to ask Miley, here's the sister. You were two years old when the whole Nancy Kerrigan thing happened. When did you finally find out that was your brother? I think it really sat, sank in that my brother was the hitman of the event. I had known about the event, I mean, just through seeing interviews when I was young of, you know, Shane was kind of doing a few interviews when I was really little. Uh -huh. um, like on the anniversary, the commemorative anniversary is five years, 10 years. And then the 20 anniversary was the 30 for 30. At that point, I was living on a small cattle farm in New Zealand. And um, the owner of the farm had just mentioned not making any correlation that we were related. It wasn't something that I like brought up in conversation, but she had mentioned that she had, I remember hating that man, you know, and it was such a moment for me that on this tiny beef farm in New Zealand that someone had hated my brother. Oh my God. And at that point, because of who my brother had been my entire life. And um, he had protected you in an abusive relationship all that time. Yeah, I, well, and just in everyone's life, I think, you know, my brother is everyone's kind of best friend, and so seeing the relationships that he had in his life throughout mine, and he was, you know, when I was growing up doing inspirational speaking at churches and, and mentoring troubled youth, so that was the only experience that I had known throughout my lifetime. And then hearing someone in this tiny part of the world that had hated my brother but had never met him or... Um, it kind of just sank with me, and so I had started kind of coming up with how I was going to be able to share my truth, and um, the My Hero's Shadow, the title had come because um, I'd had this kind of image of, you know, this large light behind my brother, and, and usually the largest lights catch the largest shadows, and so that was, I was going to write a book about it, and it was going to counter all the, the truth that the general public had based on the limited um, information they had about my brother, and I was yeah. going to you know, counter it with the experience, the personal experiences that I had in my life. And um, so, yeah, that's how it kind of came to be. And then just through meaningful connections, you know, I had met Justin through Sean, and Sean's one of my dearest friends. And, and you just kind of find these people um, throughout your journey that are kind of in the inquiry stage. Yeah, I was definitely asking big questions, like what is the, the meaning of, of no. the human experience, I'll you know? Bet. and. And you kind of find this, the people that are kind of on that same path and the same journey of, of trying to figure out what it means to, to be a human and to have these life experiences and how it shapes us and how you, you know, so just finding intentional people. And then I think it was important to share my truth. You're going to be there for the premiere. Yeah, right after uh, my baby shower. <laughs> 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 like on the way. You oh, know, um, just, yeah, it just happened to fall on the same day. And. And um, so, yeah, I'll be at the premiere. And well, You um, could have timed that better, couldn't you? <laughs> Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing that's interesting is Miley goes through her own journey in the film. Um, and I didn't discover this until we started, you know, actually going into the planning that they had never talked about the attack before. Oh because God. Miley hadn't been at a point where she was ready to sort of bring her hero down from the pedestal that she kept him on. Um, but through her own journey, she was able to, you know, come to this realization that for them to really have a close and intimate relationship, she needed to embrace him completely and make peace with his shadow. So the film kind of culminates with them sitting down and having a heart, to talk, heart talk for the first time about the abuse that they've been through and about the attack. And who knew that the whole Tanya Harding, Nancy Kerrigan thing had a Hawaii connection? We find out the darndest things. That is just amazing. The movie is My Hero's Shadow, full-length documentary, it, the subtitle, From Hitman to Hero, and uh, he is Miley's hero, that's for sure, always has been. Uh, see it at HIF, Sunday, hif.org. That is amazing. Thank you, Miley, and thank you, Shane, for being here. We appreciate you, uh, you opening up for us. Great story. Jeez. So, okay, now that you've conquered Hollywood, <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm still working on that part. Okay. But, um, now, when does your book come out? Now that'll be <laughs> nice. Want to do one more song? I'd love to. Justin Kavika Young. Uh, here's a throwback jam. distant land and if I had one wish I wish I could be back on that rock in the middle of the sea my heart is calling me to the islands blue skies and tropical breeze I wanna go back home to swim in that Pacific Sea and we can take the boat from the island but not the island from the boat cause the island stays in your heart Never forget where I'm from. Oh no, I never forget where I'm from. Said I never forget. I miss the local grinds, you know what kind of me. Lao Lao, low me salmon, and yes, Kalua Peak, and Lino Plea Lunch. Ooh, what a winner. Just call my brothers up. Oh, we go by Ina. My heart is calling me to the island. Skies and tropical breeze. I wanna go back home to swim in that Pacific Sea. And you can take the boy from the island, but not the island from the boy. Cause the island stays in your heart. And I'll never forget where I'm from. Oh no, I'll never forget. From this island, just this island, I'm from a summer and love the local girls because they are the number one. They're kicking back and just relax. The place I wanna be. Cause when I leave this island, I'll be sorry that I left you. And I will never forget. Forget you, no, no. But never to let you go. Yes, and they can't stop, won't stop until I'm from over, over back home. Over my return, return to the island finally. I'm moving like the ocean, and I'm sorry that I left you. And I will never forget you, no, no. No, 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 no. My heart is calling me to the island's blue skies. Tropical breeze. I wanna go back home to swim in that Pacific Sea. And you can take the boat from the island, but not the island from the boat. Cause the island stays in your heart. And I'll never forget where I'm from. Oh no, I'll never forget where I'm from. Makes me crinkle my nose wherever <laughs> it goes. I always know you make me smile. Please stay for a while now. Just take your time. He has to pay her royalties for that. And now. I never forget where I'm from. And I never forget where I'm from. A little cultural, appre cultural appropriation there. Small kind. I guess. <laughs> uh, Justin, good to see you again. You sound better than ever. Thank That's you. Fantastic. Hope you have a good time here. The movie that I, I can't believe you got into this and you did this so well with such an interesting plot. My Hero's Shadow, Shadow at HIF. It's uh, part of the film festival, HIFF.org. Check it out on Sunday. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much for having us back. We really appreciate you guys. We're you so it. proud of you. And one of the most unusual music hall events ever, right? We told you. <laughs> Thanks to everybody who made this possible. Uh, yeah, I think we're I think we're done. I think we'll probably have commercials up to ten. Plus, 
Did you want to do one more? I don't. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's good. Eight. It's a salute to savings at Ashley Home Store. Oh, Ridge, Salt Lake, and on board. Uh, do you have an Athena recorded, Jimmy? Yeah, we're good. Okay. Big mahalo. We're going to take quick pictures, and then you guys can line up and take a picture on the, ho on the side. <laughs> 